Happy Pentecost, everyone. So today at four o'clock, um, I'll have the next monastic lessons group. If you remember, I made a video about a month ago, exactly a month ago. I made the same type of video for the first meeting of that group. So the first um, meeting, it went very well. And you can watch the full event um, on this YouTube channel. If you just go back a few videos, you'll see a picture of an old monk. That's uh, Father Michael. Uh, not to be confused with me, just plain Michael Snellen, but me and Father Michael were the two who started this group. I really, um, I kind of gave the first idea, but it really took him because he was the one who convinced the abbot, um, which allowed it to even happen in the first place. So I kind of act as the advertiser, the promoter of the group, and he does all the work. He does the talk. Um, he's the monk. So there's a monk and there will be two monks this time, a younger monk and this older monk, and they'll give a talk. And me, just being a lay worker at this monastery, a fudge maker, I don't have much to talk about, but um, I can help organize it. So that's really my strength. And um, yeah, just a quick recap of this group. So um, last time there was a lot of failures. I didn't start advertising this group. We had in the works for like two months until that... Uh, that day before, that Saturday. So it, um, I was very busy that week with other things. And then eventually I got around to it. And I was like scrambling to message every single Catholic in the archdiocese. And I think I did. I messaged, emailed every single church that I could find on the website. Um, I emailed the newspapers, the secular newspapers. Um, and I tried my hand at like Fox News or something. You know, they might pick up a story like this. But anyhow, um, a few of those messages worked. It was picked up by a secular news station, which was really amazing, um, considering that I was too late to get the word out to my local churches. So you have a secular newspaper promoting a Catholic group, but you don't have the local parishes that are right beside the Abbey talking about it. Um, but yeah, I did stand outside of Mass that Sunday morning, and I just... Uh, I had the flyer, and you'll see the flyer in a second. I was just waving it in the air, basically, um, trying to get as many people as I could to come. And it really worked out. I think 15 people came from just that. So there was like three other people. And then uh, my mom was the fourth person. So those um, that would have been all there um, would have been at the group if I didn't get these other people from that mass that morning. So that was a nice act of courage right there. The Holy Spirit came upon me. Um, speak to Pentecost. So I think this this meeting had some special events on its own. So there was also some failures. There was, um, if you look back at the previous flyer, you'll notice I put uh, May 31st as the next date, uh, being the last Sunday of the month, or so I thought. However, um, today's May 28th, so that was a wrong date. Then even the June date, I put the wrong June date because I was looking at the wrong calendar or something, I believe, uh, tricked by the devils. And so anyhow, both of those dates were wrong on this calendar. And then we ended up canceling the June meeting. I'll be going on a road trip with a monk to Indiana, which is a whole nother video topic. Anyhow, um, so this the Catholic newspaper, the record, the Archdiocese of Louisville, they talked about this group in an article of theirs. Thankfully, they didn't publish it in their actual paper because um, they used these dates from this incorrect flyer and put it on their website. And I didn't learn about this till somebody sent me an email. He was like, hey, uh, so this date's wrong. But anyhow, I figured that out and I quickly messaged them. And just this morning, I found out they'd changed the dates on that article, which was good to see because um, I was kind of worried a lot of people would accidentally show up on May the 31st. Um, I think that is the last day of the month. Let me check. Yeah, that's next Wednesday. So a lot of people would have came to the Abbey next Wednesday um, if this newspaper didn't change the date. However, there was um, the secular newspaper. They reposted it again. I think a local church or two posted it. So that'll help a lot, just these local people talking about it. Um, and then I was kind of still worried because today is Memorial Day, where tomorrow is, Memorial Day weekend. So I, I was like, um, 
People might have better plans than to visit a Trappist monastery on Memorial Weekend. They might have camping plans, boating plans. However, I think um, there was one thing that gave me a lot of inspiration today. So uh, yesterday, Saturday, I messaged the deacon. Um, so the priest was out of town, the local priest. But I messaged the deacon. I found his name on the bulletin, sent him the flyer and told him. I asked him if he could announce this group in any way possible. And so I was, um, I didn't know, like he said he would, but I was like still kind of waiting. So at mass this morning, at the end of mass, after mass, I heard him announce it. And so he was reading off the announcements. They said monastic lessons at the Abbey of Gethsemane. So I thanked him after mass. He didn't know who I was, but I'm very appreciative of that. And that'll do a lot. Just um, all these small things helping of this group. Um, even amidst my own failures, like in, in advertising, like I can do a lot better job, but I'm just so busy with everything else. And then even these uh, small tricks the devils play, um, misleading me to put the wrong date on the flyer, the official flyer. So all in all, we'll see how many people show up. Um, I think you just heard my phone ring and that was somebody that was sending me a message that they are interested in attending the group. So we have that person. Um, yeah, lots of people um, have told me they're interested. But we'll see. I think let's look at uh, St. Bernard of Clairvaux, the founder of the Cistercian Order. And so the special thing about him and why I take a lot of inspiration from him is that this Trappist Monastery, which is the oldest monastery in America, it broke off from the Cistercians. Um so really, like, I, I pray to St. Bernard a lot, like, uh, help this group be a success, because then if this group is a su success, you can replicate the same exact event. And I'll show you the official flyer and stuff. You'll get an idea of what the event actually is. But this idea could be replicated and spread and hopefully revive Western monasticism. So that's always been a side project of mine ever since I started this group, just to see how far we could go with it. Um so yeah, St. Bernard says, There is nothing a Christian needs so much as faith. Have faith and you will profit greatly from it all the days of your life. Very good advice there, St. Bernard. My bookmark about fell out. I'm, I'm currently reading this. And so I read that last night, that uh, passage there. And then um, I didn't have much faith in this group last night. I was like, oh, it's only going to be me and the two monks. Nobody else is going to show up because it's Memorial Day weekend. The advertising wasn't um, superb. It was better than last time. I actually sent out the messages Monday, so a lot better than the day before, which happened last month. Anyhow, I didn't have much faith until this morning when I heard the deacon announce it at Mass. And so hopefully, or maybe he was announcing it at all the Masses. So that's quite a lot of people. Um so yeah, who knows how many people will show up. It might be me, two monks guaranteed, but there could be like 20, 25 people. I won't uh, estimate higher than that uh, for the sake of being disappointed. However, um, the last group had 15, uh, 18 people, I believe. That was uh, a big surprise even then. So you never really know like how many people are interested in groups like these. Um but I think it's it's a novel group. Like, how often do you have a monastery invite people in to hear a monk talk and, like, show them or tell them, convey to them what the monastic life is like? And that's like what my mom said after she attended the last group, um, that she was surprised that monks are normal people. They have um, their own struggles, their own joys. So, yeah, people... That's good for people to see, just uh, realizing like what the monastic life is. That's really why the vocation crisis happened the way it did, just because all these Catholic schools shut down. People stopped going to church. They didn't see people in the monastic or religious life. Um, they weren't around them, so they kind of forgot about them. And then you have like a lot of lost vocations just from this unawareness. So I think that's what this group really does. It just puts the awareness out there. And who knows what could come from that? Um, it's really beyond me, and so I give it all to the grace of God. But uh, to wrap this video up, I'll show you um, a little bit about like the promotional stuff. 
So yeah, it's on Facebook, the local newspaper. That's the previous flyer. You see, it's kind of overcrowded. Um, a lot of people don't read nowadays, so that was not the best um, best tactic to, to use. And the dates were wrong, so not a good flyer. This next flyer was a lot better. This um, this flyer right here is a lot simpler. It's still um, pretty vibrant. Maybe I'm um, overcrowded still, but um, you get the main idea. Today at four o'clock. Uh, so this video is going on pretty long, and um, if I keep going, I'll miss the group myself. However, let's uh, just quickly look through the rest of this. So that's me talking about it. That's the previous video I made, which you should Hello, watch. Hello, it's um, I think I was really hyper that day. I was moving around a lot. However, I was excited. So, yeah, here's the first group. We have a nice intro there of me just reporting the group. Uh, during Vespers. Vespers is right after so we invite people to go to Vespers as well. So see uh, transition to the monk and the audio or the video was messed up for the first uh, 15 minutes or so but uh, I like how YouTube put those uh, sections there. It does that on its own. It's kind of uh, scary in a sense that they can just like know what you're talking about in your video. However, yeah, there's the group. Went very well. Very, um, very cool video. Just You have like this monk talking to all these people. Um, just in the conference room of the monastery. So, Yeah, we'll, we'll look at this real quick. This is the newspaper article, the record. This is a big one right here. The Archdiocese newspaper. The Otis newspaper in Kentucky, I believe. Um, because the town of Bargetown, which is right down the road, that was actually like one of the first archdioceses in America, which is really funny. Now it's just the bourbon capital of the world, a really small town. Um, yeah, the archdiocese moved to Louisville just because Bargetown like fell off the map. However, um, this is a pretty big thing right here to be in the newspaper. So we'll see how many people that brings in. And then here's the final idea. So this is the course um, I'm going to make on the Catholicism for the Modern World website. If you see the website, um, it looks very nice. It used to not look uh, three. It was three times worse um, just like three weeks ago. But I spent the last two or so weeks just updating it um, really the last month just working on this website, getting it to look uh, new and um, up to date. So I'm not going to um, talk too much about the website because I'll make another video probably this week or next week, but we're going to be launching a streaming service. We're going to have a store. We're going to have a social media aspect. We're going to have um, a Patreon alternative for Catholic writers. We're launching a book publishing company and I better stop there before I uh, frighten anybody away. But yeah, you can go ahead and check it out. A lot of these pages are finished. There's still a few that might be blank, one or two. However, it's um, a very nice website. It's very, uh, it'll grow the company by a lot. However, let's uh, wrap this video up. So we have this monastic lessons group, and I'm going to make this a free course. So that kind of talks about the group a bit. Um so yeah, if this is a free course, like I can send this to monasteries or uh, send it to monks, send it to nuns, and they can uh, kind of get an idea of like how this group came about, like what was its successes, uh, what to avoid, how to do it, how to replicate it. So this is like my plan to kind of spread the influence of this group, to spread it to another monastery. Um, that's a cool thing. You're, you're going from the Otis Monastery in America the Cistercian Monastery. So that brings brings me back to Bernard, just going going out from like the Clairvaux Monastery, which was a revival at the time. That's what the church needs, a revival of monasticism. So yeah, um, this group, it's or this uh, course, it's not completed yet, but I can complete it pretty quickly, and hopefully it'll be up and running in two weeks, and then people out there can share it as well. Um, just... We can get this group to spread like wildfire. 
So I encourage everyone to share this video with your friends. If you're in Kentucky, um, perhaps make a trip. Um, well, you're not going to be able to make it by today, but maybe August. I think I'll be gone in July on the World Youth Day trip. I'll be gone in June. And you really need somebody like me from the outside to even make this happen just because the monks are self-contained. So um, a few of them have social media. So like you could spread this group to those monks on social media and see if they can't like help try to start a group. Like if they can't take my position and start a group at their own monastery. So yeah, who knows where this will go. Um, definitely keep it in your prayers. Keep me in your prayers. I'll continue to devote my efforts to this. Um, I should probably spend more time on it than I do. It's really a side project of mine. Just um, the website's my big project, which will be will be becoming a nonprofit organization in about two weeks time. So it's a lot of exciting stuff there. A really huge summer. I really just gave my life to God and spend my life working for the church, helping build up the church. And so all these blessings that really only came about since Easter week, Holy week. Um, that's when really people started to come help me. People started to volunteer. People started to take over things like the book publishing branch people started to make YouTube channels and then add them to the network. So like the company is really just expanding right now. It's crazy. So uh, everyone have a happy Pentecost, a blessed Pentecost. And I encourage everyone to um, just see the things I've done. Like I don't do them in a prideful way. I don't talk about them in a prideful way, but I'm trying to set an example, like just, um, possible methods of evangelization in the modern world. So as you can see, I'm not that talented. Um, St. Bernard was a weak man. They say like weak, sick, um, feeble most of the time, but he's like one of the greatest saints of all time. Um, you just have to give your life to God and see where God can lead you. So thank you everyone for watching this long video it uh, went on longer than i uh, planned it out however i hope it was uh interesting at least and hopefully somebody hears this out there and that can spread this group further so thanks everyone for watching one last time and may god bless you all